Is anybody happy on the inside? Not everybody's walking around with a frown on their face. Hallelujah. But as the saints of God, we realize we are here by the grace of God. Hallelujah. And that we are experiencing the blessings of the Lord. So we give God praise, glory, and honor. We thank God for Overseer Tony McNair. Amen. And for Deacon Oren Flynn, who have led us in prayer on this morning. Every Sunday morning, uh, we pray that you would join us. Hallelujah. We pray that you would join us every Sunday morning at 1130. The doors open up here at 2101 Atlantic Avenue, Chesapeake, Virginia, where the spirit of the Lord is. Hallelujah. Somebody said there is liberty. Oh, y'all going to have to talk back to me on today. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I don't know what you came with. I don't know what's got you bound what may have you handcuffed or shackled, but where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. He came to set you free, ain't that right? So join us on Sunday mornings, hallelujah, doors open at 11.30, prayer at 11.35, and our service begins at 11.45 every Sunday morning. On Sunday evenings at 6 p.m., join us for the best school in the whole wide world. What school am I talking about? Sunday school. I hear you there. I hear you there. I hear you there. Sunday school with Better Life Church of God in Christ on go to meeting every Sunday evening at 6 p.m. Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Join us for prayer and Bible study, prayer and Bible study. We come together every week to sharpen our tools, to sharpen our weapons. Uh, for the Bible says the weapons of our wherefore are not carnal, but they are mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds. The only way we're going to be able to fight this battle, this battle for the Lord is sharpening and equipping and sharpening our tools each and every day. Come and join us Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. for prayer and Bible study, study on go-to meeting. On Fridays at noon, join our pastor, the superintendent, Dwayne S. McNair Sr., and the prayer warriors of Better Life for noonday prayer also on go to meeting we thank god we thank god we thank god that he has allowed us the opportunity to be alive amen is anybody happy to be alive amen the song says tragedies are a commonplace amen but we thank god that he has blessed us day in and day out Amen. I was just in the city of Nashville just a couple of days ago, and how quickly we forget the tragedies that are happening around the world. And I had to pick up the phone and call my father uh, because the guy that I was lit with was clueless. Lord have mercy. As we were walking down Second Avenue in the city of Nashville, I looked at the buildings and I said, "This don't look like somebody's demolishing buildings. These buildings look off a little bit." And I said to myself, "Lord have mercy." I'm standing on the grounds where uh, the Nashville, the city of Nashville was bombed back in on Christmas Day of 2020. Pulled up my phone and took pictures. And I said, Daddy, you remember this? He said, I sure do. But we thank God uh, that God has kept us. You, you know, we pray that prayer. Lord, keep me from hurt, harm, and danger. I pray, Lord, keep me from accidents and incidents. Amen. And many of us have not seen the devastation that others have seen, even here in the city of Chesapeake, even here in Hampton Roads, 14 people who have been shot over the weekend and several of them have been killed in the city and our city alone. The devil is busy, uh, but he is a liar. And that's why we're here today to say, God, we thank you. Oh, Lord, have mercy. We didn't just come here to get something from God. But we came here as a body of baptized believers to say, God, I know that many things are going on, but I don't have so much going on in my life that I don't have enough time to say thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for keeping me from hurt, harm, and danger. Thank you for healing my body. Food on the table, clothes on my back. Say thank you. 
Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Oh, I'm, I'm just happy to be in the house. And, and I have to apologize. I have to apologize to my brother. Amen. Because uh, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes it doesn't matter where I am. Lord have mercy. When I think on the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I could be standing here behind the podium or on the drum set. When my feet get light, I can't help you. Lord have mercy. When uh, he hits my belly, I just want to holler. Thank you. Lord, I love you. Glory. He's been that good. Yes, he has. Oh, he's been that good. Hey, Amen. Let's move on in our service on today. Before I do that, uh, we thank God for all of the givers. We thank God for all of our supporters. Come on, Better Life. Let's bless God for those who are here, for those who are watching us virtually on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. Amen. On behalf of our Pastor Dwayne S. McNair, Senior and our First Lady Velma McNair, we say thank you, thank you, thank you, because we realize you could be doing anything at this particular time. Amen. But you took time to worship with us. You took time to praise and to magnify God with us. And many of you have uh, rendered of your substance to support the ministry here. Amen. And some have done it for the past 20 Nine years. Amen. We bless God. We bless God for you today. Amen. It's time to give. It's time to give. It's time to give. And even though COVID has propelled us into a new way and to doing things differently, amen, many of our givers now give electronically. Amen. So it's almost, you know, no need to bring the plate around, but that spiritual, that uh, virtual plate is going around, amen? By way of Cash App, PayPal, GiveLify, amen. And if you're still uh, not giving by that way, that's okay, amen. The tithe box is still in the building, amen, amen. Some things are staples and th some things should not change. Some things should not be removed, amen. So we bless God for that. But we pray today that you consider uh, and that you pray and that you consider better life. Hallelujah. Many things we have done in ministry here over the past 29 years and continue to do so. And God has set on the eyes of our leaders to do ministry in even a greater way. And we pray right now that you would call on the name of the Lord and say, God, what would you have me to do on today? We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. And God, we pray and we bless, we ask for a blessing upon each and every giver. We pray that you would rebuke the devourer. We pray that you would hold back the hand of Satan concerning the giver on today. God, I pray in the name of Jesus. Whatever is going on in their minds and their thoughts and their households, their father, that you would turn it around in their favor. On the job, turn it around. Yes, God. In their business, turn it around. Hallelujah. In their endeavors, turn it around right now. And God, we'll be careful to give thy name the praise, the glory, and the honor shall be thine. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Well, we thank God for you today. Let us stand as we enter into our worship service. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Clap your hands. Triumph, 
For the Lord most high is over all the earth. For the Lord most high is over all the earth. For the Lord most high is over all the earth. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Clap your hands. the Lord. For the Lord. For the Lord is over all the earth. Oh, clap your hands. Stop your feet. Lift your voice. Rejoice. Oh, clap your hands. Stop your feet. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Let's rejoice. One more time. Clap your hands. Stop your feet. Everybody clap your hands, stomp your feet, lift your voice, let's rejoice, oh, shout unto God, shout unto God with the voice of triumph, come on everybody clap your hands and lift your voices, hallelujah, as we're standing, Sister Carissa Flynn is coming to lead us in our invocation on this morning and then following her, Sister Keziah McNair with our scripture. Say amen as they come. God, God, I just thank you, oh Lord, for another day. God, you are holy. God, you are faithful. God, you're all-knowing. God, you're great. God, you're bigger than any problem that we may face. God, you are almighty. God, you are awesome in all of your ways, oh God, on today. And for that, Lord, we just say thank you. God, you are good. You're a good God. You're a good, great Father, oh God. And on today, I am excited. Excited, oh God. I'm excited that you have given me another opportunity, oh God. Another opportunity just to wake up this morning, God. And for that, I said, thank you, Lord, because you didn't have to do it, but you did. And so, God, I just thank you on today, oh God. God, I pray that your fresh wind, a fresh Holy Spirit wind, will come into this worship place on today. God, I feel your presence are already here, but God, we welcome you into this place on today, oh God. God, you're welcome in this place on today. 
morning. God, we welcome you in our hearts. God, we welcome you in our minds. God, on today we say, have your way in this place, oh God. God, you are awesome. You're mighty. You're wonderful in all your ways. God, you are worthy to be praised, oh God. You're worthy to be praised, oh God. God, you are awesome. You're mighty. God, you're goodness endureth through all generations. So Father, on today, God, I just come before you asking that you would be with us. God, any participant that has anything to do in the service on today, oh God, God, be with them, oh God. God, be with your man servant on today, God, as he brings the word forth, oh God. God, open up our minds and open up our hearts to receive on the word on today, what you have for us. God, we love you on today. God, you are great. You're mighty. God, we ask that as we go forward in this worship service that you would do a new thing, oh God. Do a new thing in us individually, God. God, do a new thing in us as a corporate body of believers. God, we love you on today, God. We just thank you because you're awesome. God, we thank you because you deserve the glory, oh God. God, you didn't have to send your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins, but God, I'm so glad that you did. God, I'm glad that you did, oh God. God, you have given me this opportunity, oh God. God, to stand before your people, oh God, and to show forth your praises, oh God. And for that, I say thank you. Lord, we just love you, God. We honor you. God, we pray for those that may be feeling sick in their bodies, oh God. God, we pray for those people that are in hospitals, oh God. God, we pray for those people that are just less fortunate than we are. God, we ask that you would remember them, oh God. God, encourage their hearts on today. God, bless them like only you can. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for your presence on today, oh God, in this place. There's a sweet, sweet presence in this place on today, oh God. And so for that, God, I just say hallelujah because it's the highest praise. And God, you deserve it. All the glory, all the honor because it all belongs to you. And so God, we just thank you on today and I pray these blessings in your precious son Jesus' name. Amen. be reading from Isaiah 55 verses 6 through 9. I'm reading from the New King James Version and it reads, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will, he will have mercy on him and on God. For he is bound to be pardoned. For our thoughts are not our thoughts, nor our ways my ways, says the Lord. For, for as the heavens are higher, higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts are your thoughts. In Jesus' name, amen. The word is already blessed. Come on, clap your hands, all you people. Come on, clap your hands like you got the victory. Come on, lift up your voice and clap your hands. The Bible declared in Exodus that God instructed Moses to lift up his hands and that the sea stood up like walls. I dare you, if you're facing a in a dark situation like a sea, I dare you to lift up your hands. When you lift up your hands, when you lift up your hands, that's giving God permission to split your situation. Come on, if you need God to take you through something, come on, lift up your hands. I heard somebody say, with my hands lifted up. It's all right to talk back with me. In my mouth filled with praise, I will bless thee, O oh Lord. If you could just give me a few Holy Ghost minutes. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. Trust me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Somebody might know what I'm talking about. Something happened. And now I go. He touched me and made me, made me. Oh, I, I'm 
looking for the old church. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. Oh, and oh, that's your life. That blessed my soul. I need somebody that got an ounce of the Holy Ghost that can say something happened. I can't explain it, but now I know. Oh, he touched me and made me, made me whole. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. You can keep it hot. Oh. You're going to wake up in a little bit. I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yield it and still have thine own will. And say, Lord, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting. While I, while I am waiting. You did it. I heard that Mason say, yes. Come on, church. Yes. Come on, we are going through this. Say, yes. Aya. Yes. Come on, we are going through this. Say, yes. Yes. I can't see my way, but I'm going to say, yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I might not know everything that's going on. But I'm going to declare, yes, Lord. Higher. Yes, Lord. Come on. I dare you to tell him, yes, Lord. Come on, we're almost there. But yes, Lord, have your way. Come on, that's the secret right there. Have your way. Come on, not my way, but your way. Have your way. Come on, it's time to surrender to the Lord. Have your way. Holy Ghost, take over. Holy Ghost, take over. Have your way. Higher. Take over. Take over. Have your way. Fix it, Lord. Fix it, Lord. Fix it, Lord. Fix it like you used to. Fix it, Lord. Fix it, Lord. Keep it hot. Fix it, Lord. When Moses was at that red sea, God told him to lift up his hands. And that sea began to split. And they went across on dry land. But there was somebody by the name of Miriam. And she had a tambourine in her hand. I want you to look at somebody and say, neighbor, I'm going through this. But I'm going with the praise. Y'all missed the shot cue. Sister Allen, I dare you to shake that tambourine. Sister Jean, I dare you to shake that tambourine. Find another neighbor and say, neighbor. Come on, say, oh, neighbor. I'm going through this. But I'm going with the praise. I'm going with the shout. I'm going with the dance. I'm going with the hallelujah. I'm going with the thank you, Jesus. I'm going with the Shabbat. I dare you to look at a neighbor and say, I'm not going to go through by myself. But I dare you to hit him with your elbow and say, you coming with me. We coming out of this. We coming out of this. We not going to stay in Egypt no longer. But there's a land. 
peeled out with milk and honey. And I'm go I dare to go like this. I'm going through. Look at somebody say, I'm not going to stay here, but I'm going. When they split the wall, Lord Jesus, this is my song. When they split the wall, you could just imagine seeing the, the creatures in the sea. Some of y'all going to catch this in the Holy Ghost. As they was walking through, I, I, I could imagine it was sharks and, and large turtles and octopus, things that could have devoured them alive. I dare you to look at somebody and say, I'm going through and the devil can't touch me. See, the shark couldn't get to the people because there was no water. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going through something. And the devil, don't let him shout by himself. Come on. Say, I'm going through this. And the devil can't touch me. Come on, they can't touch me when the Lord got his hands on me. Lord, have mercy. Y'all done messed up my little three songs. You might as well go ahead and praise him. I dare you to find somebody across the room and say, I'm going through. And the devil can't touch me. You better watch yourself. You might praise him until your next miracle. You better watch it. Because I'm going to praise him while I'm going through. for me this week whenever you're faced with a terrible situation I want you to do like Moses did and I want you to lift up your hands I'm not telling you nothing that I don't have to do myself I can hear my mother saying with my hands lifted up lifted up hands ain't good by itself but in my mouth 
with praise, not complaints. A lifted up hand and a mouth filled with praise ain't good, up, good enough, but with the heart of thanksgiving. Come on, somebody got to learn how to do math. Hands and a mouth and a good heart says, I will bless thee, O Lord. I dare you to look at somebody and say, I will bless the Lord. Turn around and look at somebody and say, at all times, in his praises, shall high up be in my mouth. I dare you to find somebody across the room and say, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Point at him and say, and let us exalt his name together. Come on, that's what we're going to do. We're going to lift our hands up and say, we bless thee, O oh Lord. 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 Oh Lord. We bless thee, O 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 oh Lord. Oh Lord. Come on, one more time. Lift up your hands. Come on, there's a house through. There's a car through. There's a better job through. But you got to go through. We bless thee, O oh Lord. Higher. We bless thee, O oh Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Every time I turn around, he's keep on blessing me. We bless the Lord today. Because there's no God like our God. Somebody said, yes, he can. Yes, he can do it. Yes, he can. He can do it. Hallelujah. He can do it. Hallelujah. And I'm going to thank him in advance. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let us pray. Most kind, gracious, and everlasting Father, today we thank you. Because there's no God like you in all of the earth. We magnify your name. We glorify your name. We witness for you. We love you, dear God. We share our love with others for you, dear God. And we thank you right now, God, for bringing us over the dangerous highways and taking us through another week. And here we are on the Lord's day. Hallelujah. Serving you with praise, serving you with uplifted hands, serving you in prayer, serving you in singing the song. God, we thank you right now. Thank you, God. Thank you for our hands. Thank you for our feet. Thank you for our minds. Thank you for the joy that fills our souls. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let the church say amen. Amen. You could get your Bibles before you take your seat on today. We will be reading from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 7, verse 21 through verses 27. That's the Gospel according to St. Matthew, verse 21 through 27 of the seventh chapter. Lord, do it. Lord, do it for
St. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 27. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of, the, of my Father, which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye work that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not. It was founded, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and the and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. God bless the reading of the word. May these truths sink deep into your hearts. May we continue to follow Christ and his word. You may be seated. Today I would like to use for subject followers of Christ followers of Christ then and now followers of Christ then and now as we look at the scriptures here from the gospel according to St. Matthew we see Jesus in his early ministry as we prepare on the 17th of next month, April the 17th, we celebrate Easter Sunday. The following week we celebrate Palm Sunday. And uh, in between the celebration of the Passion of Christ or the Palm Sunday, and the passion of Christ, we celebrate what Christ did while he was on the earth. And the things that he did, not just for the sake of doing them, but because he was on the Father's assignment. It's important to know that in his early ministry, the early days of his ministry, he began to choose disciples began to uh, look upon uh, the area and to pull out various men uh, 
who were disciples of Christ and to train and to teach him in ministry. We remember for those Bible scholars, the 12 disciples, Peter, James, John, Andrew, Bartholomew or Nathaniel, James the lesser or younger, Judas, Jude or Thaddeus, Matthew or Levi, Philip, Simon the Zealot, and Thomas. We remember in our Bible class the studying of the disciples that Jesus picked then in his time when he first began to do the work and the will of the Father. One of the verses that holds dear to my heart out of this reading comes from uh, the 24th verse of this chapter. It says, There whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him uh, unto a wise man who built his house upon uh, the rock. And when the rains came, the rain came and it blew upon the house and the waters and the floods, it stood because it was built upon a firm foundation. If we are going to be followers of Christ, if we are going to follow after the direction of Christ, then we will become disciples. Somebody said, I want to be a follower of Christ. I want to be one of his disciples. I kind of heard, got to get this one off my chest, Keziah, because I could hear you say when Elder John was up worshiping, and I know he preached earlier today, John. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank God. Did you feel the spirit of the Lord come in this place on today? Amen. God is so good. We thank God for the people of God that come out every Sunday to support the work of the gospel, to support the great commandment that Christ told us to do. And uh, uh, let me put it this way, because I have a lot of preachers watching me as well. <laughs> this is not a homily. And if you know anything about uh, hermeneutics and biblical uh, studies and everything, you understand what that word means. It's actually a style or a presentation of preaching that we generally use, which should be self-contained within a few minutes, roughly about 20, 22 minutes. But I am not giving a homily today. This is not a hermeneutical expression. Because the Bible says he chose apostles, he chose prophets, he chose evangelists, he chose pastors, and he chose teachers. And the reason why this is not a homily is because I'm teaching today. Lord, have mercy. I'm pastoring today. And a real pastor does not try to conform to what other pastors want you to conform to as if it is a competition. But a real pastor spends time looking after his flock. Lord have mercy. Building the church. We've been here for 29 years, going on 29 years, and we are still working on the building. We are still seeking the Lord to build his church in this vineyard. And if we're going to do that, we need disciples. We need followers of Christ. We need people who are faithful, not to me, but to God. Hallelujah. Sometimes you wake up in the morning, Pastor Jeff. Sometimes you wake up in the morning and you do not feel like getting on the move. But because of your faithfulness, even with the pain in your body, even with your spirit being low sometimes, somebody said, sometimes up and sometimes down, almost level to the ground, but I've got to make it. I'm going through in spite of every situation. 
because that's what that proves who I say I am. The rains descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded on or upon a rock. Hallelujah. We get the dissertation following this in verse 26 and says, Every man that hears these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which build his house upon the sand. I watch, I watch the Outer Banks, how people go out there and build a house, and then a lot of them get upset when the hurricane comes and knocks it down. Well, excuse me. <laughs> you did put it on some sand. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. But if you build it upon the rock, hallelujah, the outward exterior may take a few damages, but the foundation will stand. And, and this is what we should not lose in this season, young people as well as older people, that the foundation is more important than the structure that's above the ground. Because the greater the foundation, the longer a situation and the more powerful or the greater the integrity of a situation is. Don't be foolish. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these things shall be added unto you. Seek God with all of thy heart, with all of thy soul, with all of thy mind. Love God with everything that you've got. Hallelujah. Because it's he that have made you and not you yourself. You are the people of God. Hallelujah. Young people, don't be ashamed because young people everywhere are doing everything. You were raised Christian. Hallelujah. A lot of children were raised Christian and they got to go on the, on the battlefield of the school on tomorrow and day after day and deal with unbelievers who are upset with you because you have a Christian agenda. Don't ever be ashamed of who you are. Don't let them talk you out of being uh, who you are. Tell them I was raised Christian whether you believe it or not. Oh my goodness, because the world is lost. The world is building their houses on sand spiritually. And then they want to evangelize you with their own evangelism to follow the ways of the world. And Jesus is saying, no, 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 no. There's nothing wrong with being different. It's nothing wrong with being sanctified. It's nothing wrong with being filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. If they're going to tell you what they believe, I'm going to tell you what I believe. And you ought to tell them what you believe. Hallelujah. Because we are followers of Christ. Hallelujah. And followers of Christ do Christian things. Hallelujah. Live a Christian life. Say to themselves, what would Jesus do if he was in that situation? Mm. Disciples then, disciples now. Jesus chose 12. Then he chose some more. In this text, it was 70. And then he's choosing us. Lord have mercy. He chose the 12, he chose the 70, and now he's choosing us. Oh my goodness. He chose the 12. Sister Jessica, Jesus, when he got started, he chose 12, but it didn't stop. Somebody said, that's not how the story, uh, Brother Murcher said, that's not how the story ended. In fact, the story hasn't ended yet because we're still waiting for that blessed hope. And whether he comes today, tomorrow, next week, 10 years from now, or whenever he comes, I'm going to be ready. <laughs> Hallelujah. I heard a news class just on last week, and I was trying to remember it and share it with my wife. 
A young lady in Ukraine had to go to a shelter with her daughter and the bombs were falling everywhere. It was so critical that they had to sleep with their clothes on and their shoes on. And I said to her, I said, you remember when I taught about the last plague, how they had to be ready after the Passover? This lady was experienced seeing a Passover style experience with another context, context, but the principle is still the same. And she said, we made it out of that area, Dr. Keith. We made it out of that area and now I'm in another shelter, but guess what, I can take my clothes off, put my pajama clothes off, take on and put my, shoe, take, put my shoes beside me. I don't have to really worry where I am about being ready. And then she turned and said, it feels oh so good to be able to go to bed at night with your pajama clothes on. Lord have mercy. What a profound situation. America thinks a lot of times that we got it made. But if an atomic bomb hit Hampton Roads, you won't be taking your shoes off anytime soon. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Whatever happens, I want to be ready. Jesus chose 12. He chose 70. And he's choosing us. Peter, James, John, Andrew, Bartholomew, James, Judas, Jude, Matthew, Philip, Simon the Zealot, and Thomas. Let me say that again. Peter, James, John, Andrew, Bartholomew, James, the lesser, the younger, Judas, Jude, Philip, Simon the Zealot, and Thomas. Jesus chose businessmen, farmers. In fact, when he first did his thing, he went to the sea and he told this fisherman, told Peter, cast your nets on the other side. And then after they received so many fish because of Jesus' anointing, and they went to the shore, and Jesus looked at him as he began to pick his disciples and said, I want you to be fishers. <laughs> oh my goodness. I want you to be fishers of men, of men yes. women, children, everybody. I want you to go into the hedges and the highways and compel them. Hallelujah. Sometimes you feel like you're bothering somebody, but, you know, and, and, and I preach and I try to do as my mother would say, I'm not complaining, I'm just explaining, <laughs> Deacon Flynn. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. You, I'm, I'm trying to come, everything, every ounce of strength that I have, I'm trying to tell you this is serious stuff. And I'm trying to convince you, I'm trying to persuade the divine truth to you. Hallelujah. And whatever you have in your arsenal, whatever you have in your toolkit, just last week, hallelujah, the, the, the Federal Reserve raised the interest rates because they always say that they have tools in their toolkit so when the economy gets to a certain place, they go into their toolkit and pull out the best thing, the best scenario for helping the society or the economy to thrive. Keeping it from going into a recession, keeping it from going into a depression. And that's the way it is with God. He chose his disciples. Luke 10, uh, verse one and two, tells us that he chose more disciples. After these things, the Lord appointed another 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place that he would send forth laborers into the vineyard, the harvest. Lord have mercy. He sent them out two by two so that they would be laborers in the, the vineyard. Let me say this. If you are, excuse me, Sister Debbie, if you are a church administrator, you know, if you are 
Sister Angela, a church administrator, if you are a deacon, if you are whatever your position is in the church, if, if you are a lay person, if all you do is basically come on Sunday or when service is open and just sit in the pew, Lord have mercy. Everything we do here at Better Life is all about evangelism. Hallelujah. If we, if, if, if we have an evangelistic culture, in my definition, my personal definition for the word culture, because years ago, uh, Pastor Jonathan uh, in, in, in uh, Lynchburg, Farwell, Pastor Jonathan Farwell, we were in a meeting in the General Assembly in one of those uh, meeting rooms and what have you, and we were talking, and the young man before his father died, uh, the late Pastor Jerry Farwell, he came and he gave a presentation to the senators and the committee members that were there, and I was blessed to be a part of that. And he was saying, if you want to change your culture, y'all please forgive me for being tedious. I'm going to try to wrap this thing up as soon as I can. He said, if you want to change the society, you have to change the culture. Hallelujah. And my definition for culture is the way we do things here. Lord have mercy. Uh, that's what the world wants us to do, want us to become a part of their culture. But if you have Christ in your life, you're a follower of Christ, we don't do it like the world do. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, holy and acceptable, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing, hallelujah, hallelujah, the rebooting of your mind. Reboot that brain, hallelujah. Shut it down and pick it back up again, hallelujah. Turn it off and turn it on again. Reboot it, hallelujah, so that you can prove that which is good, that which is perfect, and that which is the will of God. Hallelujah. He chose more disciples. He put them in the street. Remember the story I told a few weeks ago, and I'm going to keep telling it. At home, you do the chores, but outside of the home, you do the work. Hallelujah. We need the work to keep the light on. Lord, have mercy. To keep the home, to keep our home. Hallelujah. It's the same way in the church. There are chores that need to be done in the church. And whatever your position is, you should be saying, God, whatever I find my hands to do, I'm going to do it to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'm not going to wait to be asked. Do you want me to change the light bulb? Do you want me to pick up someone and bring them to church? He sent them out and put them to work. Because if you don't work, you won't have a home. Hallelujah. If better life don't work, better life won't have a home. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And the things we do here, a lot of people say, a lot of people say, well, we, we, we really need to be on the outside. But if you're on the outside all the time and you don't, and the food and stuff is not prepared at the house, the house is not clean, the house is not suitable for your abode, then you got to come back in and straighten up the house and then go back out to work. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He appointed 70. Remember the 12. Now remember the, the 70. And sent them out two by two. Uh, I'm having a Noah flashback. <laughs> uh, uh, the Bible scholar Hicklin, I'm having a Noah flashback. If he can send two animals, why can't he send you? Lord have mercy. The harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. John 4 says the fields are white already. Hallelujah. I remember when we used to go out from house to house and sell donuts to help keep the church going financially. 
Lord have mercy. We sold so many Krispy Kreme donuts, I could smell it right now. <laughs> Lord have mercy. But the thing I like about selling Krispy Kreme donuts, you want to sell them in the, in the morning because they're nice and hot and fresh. But if you sell them in the afternoon or later in the day or even the next day, Lord have mercy. They still sell. Lord have mercy. The, the, the donuts, Krispy Kreme, Elder Parker, sells themselves. Hallelujah. So don't, don't come back and say, I can't sell no donuts. That's too much for me. Do whatever you got to do. Hallelujah. Ah, Lord have mercy. The fields are white already. The field will sell itself. All you got to do is go out there and say, Jesus. <laughs> My roles are sharing Jesus. You, 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 don't, you don't have to have a hermeneutical expression. All you got to do is tell what you've seen and tell what you've heard. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It's my testimony that's my witness. Hallelujah. You can preach that. Hallelujah. My testimony is my witness. My life is my witness. The way I walk is my witness. What I say out of my mouth is my witness. And I'm going to tell the world through thy light that the soon coming king is coming. But if he does not come tomorrow, you need to be ready. Oh, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. Thank God that I'm signing up this very moment to be a follower of Christ. I'm signing up, Sister Jean, to be a follower of Christ. And whatever I can do, whatever I can add to what the organization, to what the people and the body of Christ can do. I'm going to do my two cents worth. Hallelujah. Luke, Luke. I just need a couple of more minutes. Luke 10 and 4. I want to go back here because uh, in Luke 10 and 4, he talks about this. He says, carry neither purse nor scrip nor shoes and salute no man by the way, if you enter into somebody's house and, uh, uh, and they offer you something, eat what they put before you. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone. I started messing with that, but I'm going to leave that one alone. Drink what they put before you. <laughs> and then he moves it down because this time we're talking about Jesus have chosen you. I pointed out that particular verse because then I kind of go from Luke 10 and 4 to Luke 22 and 35 and 36. In 22, he changes his instructions. He says, and he said unto them, when I sent you out without purse and script and shoes, Lack ye anything? And they said nothing. Hallelujah. How can you hurt yourself serving the Lord? Because I tell God all the time, I'm doing this because this is your business. My business ain't going to last. Hallelujah. Verse 36 says, Then said he unto them, But now he that hath a purse, let him take it. And likewise a script. And he that had no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. God is that serious about our discipleship. God is that serious about his creation. And he has ordained, he has chosen us to go and to tell the story. You don't have to be a Bible scholar. You don't have to know all of the word of God from A to Z. 
I remember hearing a story years ago about a young man that had a relationship with a woman that was a Jehovah's Witness. And she knew the Bible inside and out, and she was the devout witness for the Jehovah Witnesses. And uh, she got converted to Christi Pentecostal Christianity. And the reason of her conversion was that her friend began to tell her what Jesus did to him. Hallelujah. Need a script? Go home and look in the mirror and, and rehearse your story. <laughs> because if you tell your story, hallelujah, you're going to have a measure of influence like you know not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we're going to be disciples, we've got to pray without ceasing. If we're going to be disciples, we've got to study to show ourselves approved. If we're going to be disciples, we are going to have to remember that this is for an eternal reward. Everything outside of eternity is carnal. If we feed the carnal, carnal, we will eat the carnal. We will become the carnal. But when we look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, and we say to ourselves, I want to be a disciple. Oh my goodness, Jesus had disciples then, and he still has disciples today. I thank God, hallelujah, that I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. All I have to do is find a way to balance my service to God with my service to the world. We must understand that we have to serve the world when it comes to eating and drinking and living and having a home and having uh, various things in our lives. Because the Bible says if you don't work, you won't eat. Hallelujah. And that's why we have to serve the world. But we cannot use that excuse years ago, people, years ago, and they're still doing it today. You know, I couldn't come to church last Sunday because I had to work. Lord, have mercy. And you know you were in the bed with your toes wiggling. Hallelujah. I had to wash my car. One scripture said I had to go bury the dead. And Jesus said, no, 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 no. You're just making excuses. Because I've learned that if you really want to, if you really, really want to do a thing, you're going to do it. We talk about the COVID-19 pandemic. Some of us are still sitting home. I'm not complaining. I'm just explaining. Lord have mercy. Some of us are still sitting home, but we go everywhere we want to go. When I was in college at Regent University, I did a, paper, a term paper. My first paper that I had to do was about the viruses that get into the hospitals. So I know that hospitals are some of the most viral, uh, nasty places you could ever go. That's why now they don't tell you, but they're trying to get you in and get you out. A lot of the surgeries that they do are what they call outpatient surgery, surgery so you won't be in there long enough to catch one of those viruses. But we go to the hospitals, we go to the doctor's office, we go to work every day, and then when it comes to the church, we want to act like we have bipolar. We want to feed into what the devil is doing to our minds. Lord, have mercy somebody. You ought to look at your neighbor if you're sitting beside somebody oh my, watching this broadcast and to ask them, do you have enough faith? After two and a half years, and God has kept you to get up off of your behind and come into the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. It's time to stop playing games and call a spade a spade and call it is what it is because it's the fellowship among the saints that will help us to become a better disciple. Lord, have mercy. It's time for us to stop playing with God. 
If you have a child, hallelujah, bring your child to church. If you are a child, uh, bring your parents to church. Uh, hallelujah. There are some parents that can't get to church uh, and their grown children know that they love the church uh, and they won't put no clothes on and bring their own child, their own parents to church. Uh, the devil is a liar. Lord have mercy. When David got in trouble, uh, he said, Lord, uh, I might not be able to get to church, uh, but I'm going to look to the north uh, where the sanctuary is uh, because there's something uh, special uh, about being in the sanctuary of the Lord. There's something uh, special uh, about being amongst the saints. Uh, we have some housekeeping. Uh, we have some chores. Uh, we have responsibility in the church, hallelujah, before we go out. Uh, in the hedges and the highways, we have a responsibility to come and touch and agree. Because anytime we touch and agree, the Lord, hallelujah, my rose of Sharon, the Lord, my lily of the valley, the Lord, my bright and morning star, the Lord, my hope of glory, the Lord, my shelter, the Lord. My grace and peace, uh, the Lord, uh, everything I need, uh, the Lord, uh, my helper, uh, the Lord, uh, my hope, uh, my hope uh, is built uh, upon nothing less uh, than Jesus' blood uh, and righteousness. Uh, I dare not trust uh, the sweetest fame, uh, but holy need, uh, holy need uh, on Jesus' name on Christ the solid rock when the storms come the solid rock when the rains come the solid rock when trials come the solid rock when I'm sick in my body the solid rock when I don't know what to do the solid rock I stand all of the ground all of the ground all of the ground is seeking sand Hallelujah. 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 Yes, he called Peter, but he called you too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Followers of Christ, then and now. I, you know, I'm learning every day that the greatest body, the greatest sector in our church are our seniors. Hallelujah. Because if you don't know your history, you're running blind. Hallelujah. If you don't know your history, you are, you are scheduling, you are planning to repeat the same mistakes that was done in the past. And I thank God because they say children is our future, but if the seniors and the parents don't teach the children, we're gonna have a jacked up future. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's why they're so important to me because there are golden nuggets out of people that are living their golden age. Hallelujah. Mother Mildred, <laughs> they're golden nuggets. I remember that young lady can't do now like she did then. But she worked at Sunday school. And, and when you left Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, she was in that Sunday school studying that word. Hallelujah. And then on first Sunday, she said, Lord, y'all got to give us a bigger offering for Sunday school. She pushed the support of the Sunday school. Hallelujah. Lord have mercy. And, and sometimes we ought to just want to just put our ear and hear some of those stories that you experience so I won't make the same mistake. Hallelujah. I don't want to be young and foolish, but a wise young
young person would listen to the stories of those who have gone through and bore the heat of the day. You, you, you ought to ask yourself, how, how every time I have this analogy that I'm going to close about my father and my mother, very little support, had very little resources, but they were always on top. Hallelujah. And, and, and they were like, he was like the man every time the devil would try to knock him down, he would come back. We, we, we haven't fi really figured out how many lives he got. <laughs> because always abounding in the work of the Lord. Let us all stand. I'm finding more power than I've ever dreamed. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. In the coming weeks, we want to look at the 21st century followers of Christ, the 21st century disciple. We must ask ourselves, how are we going to do the will of the Father in the midst of all of these challenges and hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou has been faithful over a few things and I will make you rulers over many we want to ask the Lord to help us balance our time make time in, to include a reasonable amount of commitment to the will and the work of the Lord so he can help us in the service mentally, physically, spiritually societally and throughout all of our communities I'm learning to lead I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Want to be a follower of Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now for this opportunity to be in the house of the Lord. To share the word that you have given to me on today. To encourage your people to fight on. To go through and to fight a little bit harder. God, you've told us to go into all the world and make disciples. You told us in this year, theme Christ 22, that we would lift you up like never before. That we would share Jesus Christ with the world, with the community, and with the church. Hallelujah. Do it for us, Lord, in Jesus' name. God, I pray now for your saints that you would encourage them to fight on, that you would encourage them to find ways to serve you better. Hallelujah. The work of the Lord never lends itself to retirement until the Lord comes to bring us home. And I pray your blessings and your strength among your people. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise. Come on, let's give him a thunderous praise. Come on, let's give him a praise. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Today I want to address the audience and also the audience in our virtual community. If you don't know the Lord and you're ready to make up your mind now, I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord, I want to be saved. Forgive me of my sins. Blot out my evil doings. Make my life clean like yours. Renew my strength in you. Take me closer to Calvary's cross where I can find redemption for my soul. I believe that God raised him from the dead, raised Jesus from the dead. 
And I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart in Jesus' name that he is Savior and Lord. If you prayed that prayer today, the Lord has saved your soul. Now find yourself a church home. If you're in the area, you don't have a church home, come to Better Life. We will help you. We will teach you. We will become a strong body together because God wants you to be a part of that victorious group that he says, well done, thy good and faithful servant, because you have an eternal home when you give your life to Christ. In Jesus' name. So until the next time, my prayer for you is that you will experience a better life.